So now I want you to take your marker, your ink pen, whatever you have, or I've got some of writing utensils. Put your name in the middle. And then what I want you to do is divide your shape in half. On the left side, I want you to write a couple of things that you felt really successful at so far. Okay, so some of you are in your first year, some are in your second, some are cruising into your third. Okay, so things on the left side that you've been really successful at. And then I want you to think about some things on the right side that you're still working on. Okay, some things that you're like, oh, this is that thing that maybe it's getting better, but I'm not quite there yet. All right, so left side, things that you feel like you're being very successful at, things that are going well. Maybe you've even got some input to share with your colleagues. You can. Either way, however you want to do it. And our names in the middle. Your name's in the middle. Yep.
Remember, the left side are things that you guys feel like you do well, and the right side are things that you need to work on. So the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna build those relationships, all right? So like, I might look at, oh look, Amber and I and Madison, we all feel like we do really well with that relationship piece, right? So there may be some other places where um, we struggle, but what I want you guys to do is read everybody's and see where you can make connections, not just with yourself, but you might see something between two other people. So make that connection for them. And on the line, right, what is that connection? That makes sense? Good and stuff we need to work Good on. and bad. <laughs> Good and uh, areas for growth. How about that? Yeah. Me and you. So Emily, planning, is that a, um, something you're good at or something you need to work on? Good at. Okay. Oh my gosh, I'm like, I need to spell a word. So Jordan, when you say pacing, is that pacing that pacing something ourselves. that we're doing well or we need some, some help with? Help with. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Got it. So here's the other thing I want you guys to notice about pacing is Jordan and Emily. So Jordan is a first year lateral entry teacher. Emily is first year was lateral entry but finished her program. And Krista is a veteran teacher. But all of them feel like they need to work on pacing. and Cheryl both need to work on that personal life, personal time, with that life-work balance. So as we look at kind of what's happened up here, at first we started with individual shapes that had kind of our, what we felt like our points of pride and then areas we need to work on, right? But now what has happened? What have we realized? We have a lot in common. Sure, absolutely. So you're kind of seeing places where you can have those conversations. What does this look like now we have all these lines on it? Grids. Grids, kind of a web, right? So we're all connected, no matter, like, so for example, if I take myself, and maybe I don't have a line necessarily that goes to Krista, but like two degrees of separation, I'm connected to Krista. Right? What happens if I take myself out of this equation? You got a dead end. I got a dead end. Who, who's Madison going to talk about when she's struggling with rigor? Who's Cheryl going to talk about with the balance piece? Okay, so each person in our web is important for our support with each other. Okay? So I'm good. Chris and I are going to use this when we start to think about what we're going to do for the rest of the year at our beginning teacher meetings, looking at places where you guys feel like you need some additional support. Let's talk about kids. What if you did this with kids? Well, you probably wouldn't have them write 
like things I feel really great about and things I need to work on. You might even just have them write things about themselves. So then what happens when there's kids up here and now they're interconnected? How's that feel if I'm a teenager who maybe feels like I'm kind of an odd duck in the world? They're going to see that they have more confidence and faith in them. They're not going to feel so alone. Mm -hmm. They're going to find other people that feel the same way. Right. Validation of yeah. that we're all weirdos. <laughs> we're all a little weird, right? Yeah. We all have some commonalities. Um, I've done this before, and like you might have one kid who writes some like really off the ball stuff on one, but at some point you're gonna find a connection. It may say you may say to that kid like, "Hey, so what else?" Like when you read what everybody else is interested in, is there anything you want to add to your shape? Oh yeah, I, you know I am really into comic books. I just didn't write it down. Comic books, and now they made a connection. So what if you did this in your class? You roll it up, right? You stick it in the back of your room, and you get a new kid. How many people have gotten a new kid since day one? That's right, most of you, right? Because we've enrolled a lot. So what happens when that new kid comes in and you've already built relationships and community in your classroom? You can pull that out and have them make one. <laughs> you can pull it out, have them make their own shape, and now they're immediately connected inside your classroom. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about content. How do we do this? with our content. Mary, Allison, Adam, please report to the main office Thanks for an important you. message. Like, you Mary, at the end of Allison, the minute, Adam, the things that, like, please report to the main office. That they Thank you. Feel comfortable with and like things that maybe they need review on and then they can maybe get into groups based on what they need mm -hmm. to review on like during remediation. Or maybe in that way you have them make a connection with somebody who's the opposite of them. So maybe this is an area I feel strongly about and you feel like you struggled with. So maybe we need to be partners so that you can share. I like that. What else? Maybe we take the kids out of this. How do we use content? How might we use the same process with content? For language arts, you could do characters. I mean, that's, that's pretty cut and dry. We put different characters up and we find traits that are similar or even um, like multiple genres. Okay. What, how, do we, how does this short story relate to this poem, relate, relate to this piece of nonfiction, what do they have in common, what do they have different? And then maybe you could add, the kids could add different pieces that have commonalities or differences with the three anchor pieces. So let's say we talk about, let's go back to characters, right, and character development and all that kind of stuff. How do kids know about certain characters from the text. text? So what if on my line I had to draw, I had to give some textual evidence? How do we do this in other content areas? What about in the, in the fine arts? You can compare two different art genres and say how they one formed the other. So like the Romanesque period formed the Gothic period, how are they similar? what's different about them, why are they too different? So they could say, well, they're both religious, and they actually have some more large scale, less painting, more architecture, and then they could say similarities, and they could some artists on both sides. And maybe we could even have different artists from different periods, and now we're making connections of similarities and influence, and maybe instead of straight lines, we have arrows of influence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? So just a thought, and, like, and let's say that you've got you want your kids to really connect with some sort of historical figure or literary figure or famous person. You could have their connections and then throw that famous person up there. Like what are the character traits of that particular person? Put them up there and create connections within your classroom. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is just, this is easy, it's quick. It took us less than 15 minutes really to kind of put our pieces up there, get our connections made. Um, and I feel like this is going to tell you a lot about your students if you have time to do it. Maybe on one of those funky homeroom days, right? That's fun. Um, or a day when there's kind of maybe you need a sponge activity, they can do their shapes and then you put them away and bring them back out. Um, this works really well when possibly you have some bullying situations where you got people who are running their jaws in a class because they're like, oh, we do have some connections that. Maybe we haven't seen before. Cool? Mm -hmm. All right.
That's fine. All right, let's all sit down for two seconds.